<coughs> Hi, I'm Rad Linux, and you may have noticed I've been conspicuously absent from my YouTube channel for a while, so I want to come back. I want to have some fun with this again, and I want to make some love for content, my bread and butter. So today I'm talking a little bit about this 4K streaming box by On. Now, On is the house electronics brand of Walmart, and they seem to specialize in primarily licensed devices. Uh, as well as like low effort, low R and D boxes. So this is like uh, basically the Google reference box for a uh, streaming device. So nothing fancy, nothing crazy. We're not getting Nvidia Shield like performance out of it, but it is, you know, it does what it says it's supposed to do. Now I learned about these from LTT. I saw they had a really nice roundup of Google supported streaming boxes a few months back. And this one topped out as the best budget device. So at $20, I had to grab one and not just one, I ended up grabbing two. So I have one of these running on a television. Uh, I have, it works great as a streaming box and it replaced the dying first gen Amazon Fire TV stick I had lying around that I was keeping on life support. So it does all that great. I don't have a 4K panel. It's only a 1080p TV, but you know, the box works as advertised. Now, I also decided to grab a second one because I saw online that these boxes were rootable and that seemed kind of interesting to me. I'd never rooted an Android device, so I figured it'd be good practice. And I had a few ideas of what I could do with it once it was rooted. So this is probably a good, as good a time as I need to mention that there are two versions of this device. One released in 2021 with Android TV support, and the second released in 2023 with a revised SOC uh, that does have uh, I believe AV1 support. So 2023 model is AV1 support and it is now a Google uh, TV device, which I, I think is like a licensed Android TV version. So you can tell the difference because, uh, well, it's hard to see here, but uh, the box will say Google TV along the top of the 2023 version, which is what I have here. And it will say Android TV if it's the 2021 version. It's imperative you know which version you're working with because the different hacks available for this are not the same across hardware and you will probably break your device. Like I said, unfortunately, I do have the 2023 version. And I say that because uh, the 2021 version is a lot more open. They have a, a nice true root for those boxes. Um, they even have like an unofficial lineage OS builds for them. Uh, unfortunately, they never got DRM working on the 2021 boxes. So most people didn't switch them to that because I mean, you know, a lot of people want these for streaming purposes and there's not a lot of help if you're not able to stream Netflix or whatever at, you know, 1080p or higher. So, you know, that, that, that was like a little bit of a discrepancy, but I really didn't care. I, I don't have an interest in using it as a streaming box. So that wouldn't have mattered. I really wanted Lineage OS on my, my device because, uh, you know, it's, it's a lot more open and there's a lot more freedom uh, of what you can do with that ROM. So uh, with the 2023 version, we do still have root. So I was still able to, to acquire root and, and go through that process, which was fun, but uh, it's, a vendor boot partition route. And uh, that means that we're kind of at the mercy of Google uh, or the, the device maker. If they ever push a firmware uh, that blocks out our route, uh, we're done for. So uh, that's an issue with this device. I decided to go ahead and just kind of shoot the moon and, and route uh, anyways, but I wanted to do this because I have this idea uh, that I want to expand my home uh, like security system. I self host a home security system and I want to add some IP cameras, but I don't particularly love the idea of using like an off the shelf uh, IP camera solution. I don't always trust the firmware. So I had in mind that I was just gonna get a, a handful of USB 2.0 webcams uh, and I was going to connect them up to some Pi Zeros, a Pi Zero W or something, and, and run Linux with a nice piece of software called Motion that easily turns a web camera into an IP camera. But at the time, it was kind of difficult to get my hands on Pi Zeros. So uh, this box seemed like an interesting way to possibly shove a couple more cameras into my security network. 
this is a fun box, but not very helpful on its own. So let's look at a few of the different peripherals uh, I needed in order to accomplish this task. So this box does come with a power supply, but it doesn't come with a cabled power supply. Uh, it is simply a uh, like a or it's like a it's like a separate USB cable and brick. It's a one single piece, so you will need to bring your own power supply. Uh, we're gonna put cable. We're, we're probably gonna also want a, a hub of some sort. Uh, we're gonna need our micro USB cable. We have uh, a nice full-size HDMI port on here. Uh, so that is that is a, a perk. So we have a full-size HDMI, and then uh, we have uh, the micro USB here, the little like kind of pyramid top one. Uh, and then we're gonna need our peripheral. So in this case, I'm gonna want this little USB 2.0 webcam. Uh, and you can see this is already becoming a nest. So this is already not a great idea, but uh, this is not about great ideas. This is about having fun, uh, trying to, to find some alternative things to throw together. So let's clean this up real fast. Initially, I, I, I wanted to try something out before I even went ahead and rooted the device uh, because there is one uh, easy solution for creating an IP web camera with this. Uh, there is a, an Android app called IP Webcam. Uh, it's really, I think, intended to repurpose old smartphones so that we can use them as like a part of our security system at home. Uh, so it's not available in the Play Store for uh, the TV devices. I guess they must have a, a separate Play Store, uh, but we can sideload it on here. So. In trying to sideload it on here, I did notice a little bit of an annoyance. Uh, I know that there's a 64-bit ARM CPU in here. Uh, when I went to go try to install the 64-bit version of the APK, it didn't go. Uh, and that is because this is running a 32-bit version of Android. There are a couple possible reasons for that. I'm actually not sure if there even is a 64-bit Android TV version available. Uh, I know that they have them for smartphones, for like pure Android OS, but it does seem like there's a, a variation here. And so it may not be up to 64 bits yet. Uh, the other reason is that 32-bit operating systems are historically better at managing memory. And this thing only has two gigs of memory. Now it does use the nice cheap trick of uh, ZRAM. So if you ever use a Linux or Android, uh, you'll probably run into ZRAM at some point, which is like a compression based swap uh, that works in RAM. So it is very fast. It does have a little bit of extra CPU overhead, but it, it can ostensibly push your, uh, your device to like really kind of almost have like twice the amount of memory. It's kind of wild. Uh, it's really downloading RAM uh, directly off the internet. It's pretty cool. So it does have a couple of tricks in mind, but again, still limited memory. So maybe that 32-bit operating system is for that. Either way, we're not maximizing uh, the, our ability to use this 64-bit processor. Uh, it calls to be for cooling solutions. Like this is really nice uh, and runs very cool. Uh, because it has like a little metal base plate here in the bottom. It seems almost like they've taken a cue from like Raspberry Pi 400s or whatever, and they finally decided to cool these streaming boxes, which uh, I think is hilarious because I've only really ever had like Chromecast or Roku sticks or something like that, who, which are historically just so hot. It's ridiculous. So, sorry, tangent aside. Um, yeah, so I, I put it on the box, got everything going, and it worked. It worked pretty well. Uh, one quick pro tip, uh, the USB debugging uh, will block you from being able to use peripherals. So you have to use turn USB debugging off, and then our peripherals will work. Uh, but yeah, it was running. There are a couple issues I ran into. I didn't have as much control over the camera as I wanted in terms of uh, you know, adjusting like focus and stuff like that. I could tap to focus, but it wasn't really the same, like being able to set a ranged focus. Uh, I was also a little frustrated because uh, you can only run one camera, right? It's basically intended to be used on a smartphone. So you only have like a off front facing camera. Uh, but I wanted to be able to run two cameras because I mean, this is a quad core CPU, right? I mean, like it should be able to run two webcams. Uh, I have other quad-core 
ARM CPUs that can. So I wanted to take a shot on it. But once I was able to root this uh, through the magic of Termux, uh, I was able to basically set up something called a CH root inside of this device. Now, if you've ever worked with Linux, CH roots are commonly used in like a recovery process, right? You have a live USB uh, that you can boot into your system and then CH root your broken file system. Uh, and then you can do different things. It, it almost kind of like acts as that operating system, right? It mounts it as, the, as a working functional operating system. You can update it. You can remove packages through app. You can do different stuff with it. Now, CH roots are also used as kind of like um, jails almost for different running different applications. And that's perfect uh, because the CH root runs off the kernel of the existing operating system. And in our case, uh, we are really just running a very heavily modified Linux operating system or Linux kernel, right? That's really all Android is heavily modified Linux kernel. So we can actually CH root directly from this box, right? We can use the kernel in here to run a Linux distribution with root. Uh, we are able to actually mount different drives, um, different parts of our drive, right? our system partitions, we can mount our, our dev partitions. So that means we're having direct access to the hardware. Uh, and this is awesome, this is wild. This is what I was able to use uh, to set up Motion, finally. Uh, and when I got one camera going, I was pretty excited uh, until I looked at HTOP. Uh, or, you know, you can use whatever you want top. I looked at the system utilization and I realized that the load was incredibly high. Uh, and that is because of the IO. Now it turns out that these webcams, USB 2.0 webcams really saturate a USB 2.0 controller. And we only have one input, one USB uh, input here and it's one USB controller, right? So uh, it immediately freaks out because even though the CPU could handle more, uh, the, the IO on this thing cannot really handle much more. They hit a load of about three, three and a half on a quad core processor. So that's really not ideal. And my dream of running two webcams off of this became pretty moot. Uh, so it did function though, it did function well. I will say this is again, not ideal because I really wanna have complete control over the firmware. I don't want to have even Google's presence on the device. Uh, and so I, I really, this is not a long-term solution. Uh, and it's not a long-term solution because Google has decided it's no longer a long-term solution. Uh, the other day I was having some issues. This thing kept uh, rebooting itself and it hadn't done that for months. I really, I had been running this for a while. Uh, but it started just infrequently rebooting and doing some weird stuff, and I was kind of confused. And one day, uh, it rebooted on itself, and I went to go into TSU, uh, which is, you know, uh, Termox Pseudo. And it said, hey, you don't have root permissions on this device. I said, no, I do. And I went, and lo and behold, uh, Magix said, was not installed anymore. And uh, I, went, I went, you know, searching around uh, on the original thread that I found the, the root hack on. And yeah, in somewhere about March, uh, they pushed a new firmware update and that firmware update killed uh, root, killed root access. And it took me a while. Uh, and this actually only happened to me within the last month, back probably the last week or so. So it took a while to get back to me. But honestly, this is really all kind of my fault. Uh, I should have done something important in the very beginning, and this is something I've done with all of the things that I've used as IP web cameras in the past. Uh, when you run an IP webcam, that camera does not need to ever touch your WAN. <laughs> all right, so you never need to have an IP web camera directly touch the internet. It's not necessary. This should all be in-house and should all be connecting in your own LAN. So I should have from the get-go uh, blocked this from connecting to the internet in my router. 
right? I should have set up a firewall rule that said that this cannot connect to the WAN. And I've done that on, on previous devices, but in all the fun and the rigmarole and all the hacking I was doing, uh, I, I didn't bother to do that. I've completely forgot. And if this could never have spoken out to the internet, uh, I don't think that it would have been able to update the firmware. Uh, now that, that could be an issue long-term for security purposes, uh, but ultimately that was the downfall of this device. So luckily this thing's not broken and it should still function as a proper streaming device. Uh, I also have tried going back to the old way I was doing uh, with the Android I or with the IP webcam application, and that seems to be kind of working, but it's not really like a great solution. So I think it's time for me to just buckle down and buy some Pi Zeros. And maybe I'll do a little video on that in the future if that feels like something that you're interested in. Uh, if you like this kind of stupid stuff, please let me know in the comments section. Uh, and hopefully I'll have some more content, some either some light content, and I also have some more complex stuff I've been working on that it really has taken me way longer than I ever expected. But thank you so much. I'm Rad Linux, and hopefully I'll see you next time.